I still say we got to get the adults involved, right? When mm-hmm. you have adults that don't get involved in this stuff or don't know, how can they teach the kids? Right. Right. Welcome right. to the We Got Problems podcast with co-hosts Curtis G. Martin, Rhonda L. Brown, and Khalif Johnson C. The one and only podcast where solutions get discussed to our community's everyday troubles. Each week, you will hear mind-blowing conversations and actionable tips and strategies that you can implement in your daily life to become more effective. We got problems and we got solutions. All right, you guys, welcome to the show. This is We Got Problems, the podcast where we discuss solutions. I'm Curtis G. Martin, and I'm here with my co-host, Rhonda L. Brown. Hey, everybody. Khalif Johnson, Sr. Hey, how y'all doing? And Lashika Phillips. Hey, everybody. And today we're talking about Georgia districting lines being redrawn. Guys, what do y'all think? Is that something that happened all the time? What kind of questions we got? Uh, it, it's definitely not something that happens all the time. <laughs> y'all probably does. We just don't know about well, it. <laughs> for, I, well, let me rephrase that. It happens, but not to benefit uh. the vote. <laughs> oh, definitely that. So, um, how does the creation of black majority districts in Georgia relate to promises made in the Voting Rights Act of 1965, um, which was a, a landmark piece of, of federal legislation mm-hmm. um, that prohibits racial discrimination in voting? Mm-hmm. I, I think I think it helps. You, you know, it gives districts um um it helps them be able to vote and put in the candidates that they want in. Mm-hmm. Um I think where the problem lies is when they sneak and redraw the lines and they draw them just enough to where they, after they do the census, they say, Okay, uh this city has this many people. If we put them with this city over here, they can't outvote us. And then we break up some of them over there and put them with that city. They can't outvote them. And then we can take them that's left. Right. So when they Mm -hmm. do it to benefit a certain party, that's when it's wrong. Yeah. Right. But it's been a practice that's been going on for a lot of years, and they're just now starting to address it with the redrawing of the lines and doing it in an open platform so we can kind of understand what's going on where those lines are being drawn and if they try and move them again it'll be more of a conversation than what it is than what they what it's been in the past mm-hmm. 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 well people are getting smarter right like every election we get smarter and smarter when something happened somebody will come out and say something and then we're like oh wow i didn't know that like like i can give you an example even with the president um when when um Obama started doing executive orders. We was like, wow, the president could just go on his own and sign <laughs> stuff. Right? So they showed us how it worked because now the next president come in and say, no, we're just going to overturn what he did. Right? So they mm-hmm. try not to let that be seen and sneak little things in that way. Right? But so we get smarter and smarter. We didn't know what redistricting was. We don't give I'm a shit. Really let's just get out of, yeah, let's just go vote. We don't care. You, Y'all can name it what you want, but we're going to vote. And we didn't know they were stacking the deck, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what we get to. So, so true. When, when we think about it, um, do you think that the court's interventions is a sign that there's been manipulation and district boundaries? And then how can we ensure every vote is given equal weight? Yeah, that, mm. that, 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 that's hard. But yeah, it, it's been happening. So that's another way to know that something went wrong when the courts have to step in. And then see now with social media, we get smarter and smarter because when something happened, you got everybody teaching something. Um, no matter if they know it to the fullest <laughs> or not, they share it, right? And then it makes you look into it. Yeah. And then somebody else will come debunk it or, or, or move it even farther, say, yeah, well, one thing you missed is this, and they'll add something on to it. And, and then we all learn that way, right? We just can't go with the piece of information that we see in here. But once they said something that it was wrong, um, my thoughts were, okay, 
why all of a sudden now they saying it's wrong? You know why they saying it's wrong now? Because every time it's voting season, the other side try to do something to debunk what the other one done, right? So they did it sneaky, and then they say, hey, y'all know this ain't right according to 1965, so we're going to change it back. And they had a judge to change it back. So, so now we learned something again, right? But at mm -hmm. the expense of getting whoever they need to get in to push whatever agenda they need to push. Right. So mm -hmm. we just, we just got to keep learning and, and knowing what they're doing. And then, you, you know, uh, I hear some of the Muslim brothers that be online, they say we got to learn to do for self. Right. Mm -hmm. So some yeah. of the stuff we, we, we watching and learning, sometimes we got to learn how to go vote, but then back up and do for self. Mm -hmm. That's an important part of it, because when you got people who don't have your best interest at heart making laws, it's never going to be to benefit us. It's never going to be even until you get your own politician in there that you got a personal relationship with that you've done fundraising for and they go back up everything that y'all agreed to. You don't have a say in that. You can go off what they say they're going to do when they get in office. Things going to play out how they going to play out. But for the most part, you got to really, like Kurt say, do for self. Make sure you're governing yourself and you're doing good business with yourself and putting yourself in a good position beforehand because the laws that they're drawing up definitely aren't for us and to benefit us. It's to get the votes and get the people who they want office in office and they're doing any tactic to get it done. So do you think these new lines that they that they have now will help us get more representation um, in like in Georgia specifically in Georgia Congress and um, influence future politics? I, I think so. Uh, when I first saw saw this topic, I thought it was that they were redrawing it to benefit. Right. Uh, a, a certain party to kind of make our voices not heard but actually they're trying to change it back from something that happened mm -hmm. and when you look at that like i still have a problem with it because of we we think the democrats are all about us right but they don't they don't often do what's right when it's time that like they should they saw that when it happened and nobody made no noise about it and then they should have been making noise about that the whole four years up to now, if they were really for us. Right. So you only let me know that you're doing it for election only. Right. Right. Like that's the problem I have. But I still think, I mean, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I still think it'll help, you know, in the long run, as long as they don't sneak and put them back. Or make them worse. Yeah, no, it, it'll help. But at some point, at some point, like, it'll be something else that's sneaky, right? Like, oh, yeah, I can see them doing. So now they saying I, I saw one area said that Atlanta grew over the last 10 years over 400,000 people. Right. So I can see some other areas saying that, well, we should be split into two cities amongst us and get more votes for our city because it's too many of them over there and it's not equal over here. Right. So now instead of everybody having maybe one vote a piece or one representative a piece, they get two representatives because it's not equal to the proportion of people. Right. So mm. we, we just got to watch the sneaky techniques. Um, there should be watchdogs for everybody because for yeah. me, I'm, I'm a believer in that uh, this country has gotten so out of control where well, it's been out of control, but it's so out of control to where everybody's crooked and you need a watchdog for the watchdog. Mm -hmm. I think this is where it's important to work because I know that there are some people who are adamant about not voting and uh, not here to convince either way. Uh, but what, regardless of where you stand on voting, whether you want to vote or not vote, uh, one thing that we all should be participating in, and that's our local um, county, city, when they have those meetings that people don't want to show up to, you know, it's usually once a month or they have meetings every quarter, general sessions where the public can come. That's where people need to be. 
that's where you can find out. So you're not finding out the day that you go vote. Oh, I'm not supposed to go here. I'm supposed to be 50 miles or 40 miles from my house to go mm-hmm. vote. Like that's where we get the insider information. So we're not the last to find out about some changes. Um, so like I said, yeah, regardless if you vote or you don't vote, it's really about getting involved in your community, whether you being a watchdog or a part of some community that is some sort of a, a, maybe not watchdog, but there are so many different community organizations to be a part of that keep you in the loop, right? Um, even websites, your city, your local um, government, there's a website you can go on. The meetings are always posted to the public. Uh, I just think that there's so many things that we can be doing so that we don't feel like we are left behind or that we're not part of the conversation. We can get be a part of the conversation. Hey, hey I like what you said about um, like like we don't care if you vote. I, I'm gonna go a little different way on that. I I, I want to say like we do care if you vote. We ain't gonna tell you how to vote. I ain't telling you how to vote, but get your ass out there and vote. Right, like they need mm-hmm. to vote. No, seriously, they do. Like, I ain't, I ain't gonna tell you to vote Democrat. I ain't gonna tell you to vote Republican. But you definitely need to vote. Like, we we get people saying your vote don't count. We just need to like what it do for me when we vote and people start talking about it. We can kind of see where people heads at. Like, why are you? Why did you vote that way? Like, we should be able to have conversations with a black Republican, a black Democrat, black independent, without us arguing or being mad at each other for voting however they voted, right? We got a bunch of different reasons for not voting or or voting, but I think we should vote, like you said, especially in the local stuff, right? Like that has to happen. So I'm gonna go a little farther and say, we ain't gonna tell you how to vote, but get your ass out there and vote. Well, I was just saying, because I know that there are some folks that, that's their way of being vocal. That's their way of going against the the grain and and having that resistance is, you know what? No, I'm not going to go along with the get along. I'm not going to vote so I can wear a sticker and have some conversation with you about who you voted for, who I voted for. My resistance is in my silence. Yeah, no, I get it because so um, for, Trump, for Trump and Biden, the first go round, um, I went in and voted. Man, I voted for both of them. <laughs> I, I watched them both in. And the reason I did that is because if I left it blank, they could put in who they wanted to put in. Mm-hmm. But if I push both of them, they void it out. Right? So that was that was my way of protesting. So I basically didn't vote, but I went. But the process, yeah. Yeah, I did. I went yeah. I due process, mm-hmm. right? Like, so, yeah. you, you, you know. It's a, it's, it's a thing we got to show our youth that being a part of the vote. You don't get to say if you sit on the side. So you got to go in there and at least put your vote in and say that you participate. You don't have to all the way agree with everything they say, but as long as enough of their stuff line up better than what the other side line up, put your, put your tally your vote and make sure your voice is heard. Yep, no, that's good. Yeah, I definitely agree with the with the the local, at least the local voting. If nothing else, the local voting for sure. So do you think now that that Georgia has put it out there that they're re, redrawing the lines, do you think other states will follow suit? <laughs> yeah, it's election season, of course. Like, why not? It, it got to be some reasoning behind why, though. Like that, like I, I'm cool with people redrawing, but why are we redrawing, right? And, new and, subdivisions. It's yeah, new yeah. Subdivisions so, now, so, Curtis. So, I'm just making this up, but you know that's No, no, I, I get it. Like, like uh-huh. if, if if we bring a bunch of people in, but they move to my city, you want to redraw the line on that little piece so they could be over there with you guys, so y'all can overtake that city, right? Like yeah. if, because, because. When a certain demographic move in, is that why we redrawing, right? Oh, like, or, or is it just cause the people, <laughs> right? Like, because if it's just cause the people, it should just stay the same, right? right? So, so they trying to stack the decks, right? Like, I oh, don't know, this shit crazy, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not serious at all. We just stating facts. I mean, yeah. <laughs> or fiction. What's your yeah. your thoughts? <laughs> 
Yeah, they can believe what they want to believe. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we we know what's up <laughs> on our side of town. Yeah, but you know, I, on our side of town, like we get bodies, and we could actually be doing something with these votes if we know where we actually where the lines are and who are actually in our district to vote. We know where to go gather people up. Like, yo, have y'all voted yet? And then once you start pushing that, and you can actually start making some changes on these cards because. That's where the real thing is won when you start getting who you want in the Senate. So that's where your votes really start counting in the country. So if you get the senator you want in office, that's because you're doing some local pushing and your community is putting up some members. Like, okay, y'all could actually change. Y'all got one of the biggest counties in the state. And now y'all actually pushing something. Hold on. Like, this this is actually mattering. And when you put your foot forward and you see what your vote actually counts for, then it's a little bit different. You, you're not as frowned upon. You start becoming a donor. But you, you know what happens too with those senators and stuff, man? And I, I, I'm guilty. I'm totally guilty of this. Um, they used to send their little um, sh- flyers out, right? And I would get the flyer like, okay, I, I trust her right there. So I'm voting for who, all the people she said vote for. Then I realized there were some times where I didn't like half them people. <laughs> Right. Like once I start looking at what they stand for, I don't like half mm-hmm. them people. So now I, I, I try to take that list and look at who's running against them and try to like find some information on both of them and see who I'm a vote for. Right. Like um, I, I remember seeing a person that was um, he was vo- running for somewhere, something. And, and I was like, no, I don't want him in. He was a prosecutor and he was for like. Uh-huh locking all us up why would i want him running this over here now but he on your list because that's just your crew Mm -hmm. you you know so we got to know what people are about some type of way um and 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 i think too um i'm just throw this out here off topic a little bit we got to get those books from claude anderson and 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 listen to some of the stuff he talk about right because politics is is some of his game that he laid out for people but we missing it because he don't have a flash behind him Mhm. That's so true. Mhm. Mhm. All right. I've got a question here. I see a note. Um, I wanted to ask, um, especially for you, Trash and Curtis, about just how important it is for men, um, to see diverse perspectives in government. Like, have either one of you ever thought about running for office like i mean i could i could see y'all running for like you know a couple of i don't know khalif for mayor curtis for mayor or he's like what no i i i, I can't you, you know you know what you know what um there's no doubt in my mind i don't think i i can get inside and do a great job at anything that we do but I can see me being somebody that get behind somebody and, mm-hmm. and, and, and push hard as I can to get people involved. Um, I, I would like the behind the scenes type stuff, like more than, than me being out front. Um, just because I'm, I'm not politically correct. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, like, so I, 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 I couldn't because I would have to keep a straight face and I got that Gemini face where, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I'm talking about where somebody say, yeah. somebody say you, like, what, what you, you know, just we, say? we probably need that though. I think we need that. Um, no, <laughs> I, 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 I like some that. truth. Uh, I gotta oh. find this guy. I gotta find this guy. He out of Louisiana and, and hip y'all to him. But I, uh, he, he, he was at a city council meeting, and it took him wow. off, and he been running for stuff now. But I'm gonna find some chambers, right? Um, oh, I yes, got a little but, box haircut. Yeah, yeah, but but the dude go hard, man. He's in, uh, I think he's in Detroit. No, I, I thought he was in Louisiana. I thought he was in Louisiana. Know, but I think when we're talking about the same the same person. Yeah, his name's something Chambers. I'm gonna look him up and I'm gonna find it and tell y'all Possibly about Chambers, him. Chambers, but... yeah. He talk real slow. No, he 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 be at it. He be at it. <laughs> he actually was smoking herbs on a commercial too. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> see, my thing is when it, when you start having people watch your every move and expect you to be the, the beacon of light, then they start seeing your stains. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, that's not what I was thinking about. That's Gary Chambers Jr. 
<laughs> but he spoke at a meeting one day. Oh man, he he lit into him, man. I'm talking about. One lady was sitting there shopping online. He like, look at you. You ain't even paying attention. You doing something online. And when they went and got the footage of what she was doing, she was actually shopping. She was actually shopping. And he blew up from there. He might have been all, always around, but he ended up running for office. But, yeah, no, I, I, I think um, us men need to get out. Because I, I remember growing up as a kid, and, you, you know, we always talk about we don't have role models. We definitely have role models. We just got the wrong role models in the hood, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, so yeah. they definitely there. It's just the wrong ones or they delivering the wrong message. So I remember going to the store and one of my older guys that got out, he uh, he had just got out of jail. And so, so you know, you don't, it's almost like, um, I hate to do this too, but it's almost like Jehovah Witness come to the door. Uh, he would do stuff like blow weed smoke out the door <laughs> and then they would leave, you know what I'm talking about? So, so, but that's what he was teaching, you know what I mean? So when we go to the store, uh, you don't want to be bar bothered with them trying to get you to sign up for voting. He like, no, nah, I'm on parole. They like, oh, okay. You can't vote. So now we all we ain't never been to jail. We talking about we on parole. Right. So, so the message that we're being taught, right keeps us out of the game right so yeah so i i think we should be a part and we should like talk to kids and and we yeah. should do more and i and i i think um uh you know i hate to put this shameless plug on the we got problems show but the black masterminds i think once we start getting into high schools and junior high schools and talking to people more and more and then having members and then we got one message that we we sending right like one thing we can learn from some of these politicians and and that's either with redrawing lines or whatever they do when they get locked in on a message they all say the same thing it, it's it's not gonna be no different when they hear lashika talk she gonna say the same thing they hear ronda boom me khalif we no matter what happened they they deflect Whatever question you have for me, like, you know, you know, you're absolutely right with that question, but we got to get into these high schools and speak to the kids. Right. And they say, well, Kurt, <laughs> what about what about low income housing? Yeah, we need to help with low income housing, but we got to get into these schools and talk like they stay on their message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And yep. so that's what we got to do. What do you think it would take for us um, to see more black and brown children interested in politics like i can't remember growing up and having that what do you want to be when you grow up day you know every now and then and you know i can't remember growing up that there were kids in my classroom that said they wanted to be president uh, i mean that was a goal just like a lot of kids want to be astronauts or firemen or you know that was the thing and i honestly don't hear that a lot anymore I mean, do y'all, or what do you think it would take to see more children actively interested in politics? Kids got to get involved early. Like, they got to start with the ASB. They got to start with uh, Black Student Union. They got to um, they got to get involved in these programs early to be familiar with how these structures work. And once you understand how the structure of your school work, oh, now you can understand how the structure of your city work. Okay, now you understand the structure of your city. Now you might want to understand the structure of your county. Okay, you start understanding the structure of how your county works and what laws do what and what can get what moving for you. Then it's like, okay, let's go ahead and see what's going on with our, our region, our district. And then we go ahead and see what's going on with our state after that. Then you might want to go ahead and see what's going on with the Senate because then you might want to really make some moves and move the country. But it takes an understanding at the bottom from in the household, putting some pride into who you are and where you're at. And when you start putting pride in your community, you want to see better for your community. Then you being in the community, you understand what the problems are in the city. And then you see the 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 malarkey that they on the outside fixing this fence when there's potholes and down 44th block. You know what I mean? Like you got a you got a different understanding on what's going wrong in your city than what the people on the outside are trying to fix. They trying to beautify parks, but you got a homeless infection. In a, in a park that would actually make the park better if you can kind of do something for the homeless people. But you got the funds being allocated in ways people who don't look nothing like the people who live in the community 
are are allocating it and then you just got all kind of wasted funds and then you hear about people stealing and then there's a whole laundry list of stuff to go on with when you start talking about people and money but at the end of the day you really want to see somebody inside the city helping fix it hey mm-hmm. so they, they they have this rapper named yellow pain um he he got a song talking about the judicial system and how it works right mm. and, and he he goes through the process and his raps are so cool to where he sound like the rapper it don't sound corny you know what i'm talking about most of the time when we get somebody trying to put a message together the rap don't sound real it don't it sound corny <laughs> but this guy he sounds hardcore he sound like he he put his message off but he talks about how it is that's what we need for for yeah, guys uh-huh. like KRS1 i remember listening to KRS1 i learned things from KRS1 listening to his raps listen to mm-hmm. his music Right. We learn stuff. So we need role models that's going to put quality music out there. Right. Like they have a bunch of like that's what I've been going through doing too. um, um deleting some of these guys that I follow. That's um, that's some um, hip hop stars that is, don't have no substance to them. And I'm following underground guys that's got a message that they're speaking right so mm-hmm. that's what we need to hear right like like what was the can you give that rapper again what was his name uh, What you say? yellow pain yeah i know for sure he got one my vote don't count and he have another one he even got another one about thanksgiving Ooh, oh oh y'all need to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey 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 go check him out uh i would say his name yellow pain but go check him out oh we gotta um, check that out oh yeah uh, get voters to the poll is what one of them called. He got one called My Vote Don't Count. He got another one called um, uh, Get Voters to the Polls. Um, yeah, he bad. He bad. Okay. I, I, I like it. Yeah, they also they have programs like um, to get youth involved. Um, Running Start DC. Um, they, I, I'm sure they have other programs in like local programs. But that's one that I know for sure is Running Start DC. Uh, I know Trash talked about um the kids. I you know Trash, we always go to the opposite uh, of the spectrum on that, right? Like always. Trash, we say the kids, but I still say we got to get the adults involved, right? When mm-hmm. you have adults that don't get involved in this stuff or don't know, how can they teach the kids? Right, right. right? Like 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 my kids is up on AI, but it's probably so many kids in our community that's not up on AI, right? Like, like because they don't have nobody pushing that stuff. So same thing with politics, right? They don't have nobody pushing it. And then you, you, you know, like something I preach to my son though, is when I tell him stuff and the girls too, but me and my son, like we've been together so much lately to where I get to really talk to him. Um, I, I, I tell him, I said, I said, who told you that? I said, did you look it up? He's like, well, no. I said, so you can't believe everything you hear. You got to look it up. I, and then so to prove it to him, I said, even with me, hmm. when I tell you stuff, I'm going to tell you the truth all of the time. But I need you to look it up and check for yourself. So when they're doing that, now they're studying and now they're learning how to study. Right. Like so we, we definitely have to get parents involved. We got to get the kids involved so we can meet halfway like like. We we always say children are our future, right? Like shit, you, you know what about our right now? Our right now so fucked up to where, and I know I ain't supposed to be talking like this on the show. We got a clean show, but um, uh, our, our right now is so messed up to where we we got to fix that along with the kids being our future. Because if not, they gonna get the same thing that the right now is, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it's rough. Yeah, you'll end up with parents trying to sue some social media company because the child got messed <laughs> hey, But, but that, that's, that goes back to parents not wanting to be responsible for their own being, for yeah. their own seeds. So you got a lot of parents out here that want to point the finger when in reality, they should have been in front of that kid on the phone. You should have been paying attention to the website, website that kid was going to. You should have been more involved in what those text messages that ch- that kid was sending out on that phone was actually sending. It takes some parenting to get involved with actually making something go right on that. So I, I 100% agree with you, Kurt. Like, you can't point no fingers after, you know what I mean, you could have actually been involved doing something. And she can you right, you can't start just suing somebody because of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this was this was good. I think that 
I think the the redistrict redistricting is going to continue to happen. It's been happening for for years, um, and I think that the more that they um, change the laws around voting, I think that we'll probably see more of that. But I think what if people are interested and they want to be active, then you have to be proactive, right? So get involved with the local communities, uh, organizations, and general sessions, and um, voice your opinion that way. Uh, you can even volunteer for various um, uh, politicians that are running various candidates and just to get an idea of what's going on behind the scene. I had the opportunity to work for the vice mayor of Nashville um, for a while. That was a really, really great experience um, for me, um, as well as my mom worked for Congressman of Tennessee for a lot of years. So I was able to see as a child and growing up what that looks like in terms of behind the scenes. Um, and sometimes that can kind of make you a little jaded, right? Because maybe you know a little too much about what you know how the sausage is made, right? But um, I still think it's definitely worth connecting with local organizations, local politicians, see where there's a need for your specific skill, um, your specific product or idea. And I think that that's what's going to um, maybe not help, but I think that that would add some um, resources to communities that are being affected by, by all of these different changes. Yeah, we, we, we need something like a like a tradition guide right like <laughs> like no because we didn't lost all our traditions right we don't we don't have any set things that we do the kids should know this by a certain age they should know this they should be doing this right they should be doing this and then as they turn 18 become men become women right they have this whole toolbox of things that they have been taught yeah. right because the school's not doing it. the school's teaching them two plus two that's it yeah, that's called cold, Curtis. That's called living, living on a cold. And yeah, I think, yeah. I think that some communities within our community have lost the cold. Like, what is what is the cold? You know, yeah. and I think we have to build that. We have to rebuild that um, for the generation now and for the future. And so, yeah, I think we have to build it, rebuild it. Yeah. So this was this was a good this was a good discussion, you know. Yeah, I know we were talking about Georgia. We ended up talking about children and politics. Uh, like it goes hand in hand, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it, it does because they, they you, you know, the stuff we ended with just now with bringing the parents in and men getting involved. Where if we doing all that, then the kids gonna end up knowing when something going wrong with some redlining or or changing the districts and yeah. uh, just kind of knowing about it. But yeah, y'all go take a look at Yellow Pain. He he, he kind of good. Yeah. There's some other guys out there too that they get busy, uh, but yeah, we need more of that. So, so the guys that's out there doing that, they keep them out of the limelight, right? They keep the other rappers in the limelight, so so we don't learn. Mm -hmm. That's how it's always been. They want to put the negative in front of us and let us attach on to a beat, opposed to listen to a message that's going to influence our community in a positive way. And that's what the message is right now. You hear some of the artists, the female artists that they putting out right now. Their message has no substance like a, a Moni Love or MC Light or Queen Latifah would have for our young queens coming up. They, they wouldn't even be able to be in a circle with nobody like that with the messages that they preach. It's yeah. just what they're promoting in front of our kids now is ridiculous. And us as parents, we have to be right there on the forefront to let our kids know what's right and what's wrong what's cool and what's not hey you guys we got problems but we also have solutions and we are we got problems and we got solutions thank you for listening to stay connected with us like share and subscribe to the we got problems podcast you can find us on social media platforms at Curtis Martin 247, at Rhonda Wright's Official, and at the underscore trash underscore vegan underscore.